can we slam the door shut? You do see that the doorway is only seven feet tall and three feet wide. Oh. But it is gelatinous. <laughs> it's, it's gelatinous cube proof. I would, I would okay. still like to close the door if I can. <laughs> close. <laughs> um, if the cube can't come through it, maybe we should kill it through the door. <laughs> How much experience points do we get for the cube? Uh, Seven. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> Mr. Greedy. <laughs> can't wait for me just to give it to you later. 150 each. 150 each. So, 85, 65? All right. You are in the hallway again. You have the door to the north, and you have the two closed doors to the south. <sighs> you know what? Calista, how you feeling? I'm feeling all right. <laughs> Four hit <laughs> points. <laughs> Should we try to take a quick rest here after that ridiculousness? Use the last of my hit die, at least. I have no hit die left, but I can take my action surge and second win back. That's good. Uh, what about you, Callista? You want to do a short rest? Sure. All right, I'm gonna use my last, last hit die. Just in the hallway? If <laughs> we could go back to the bathroom. <laughs> it's gelatinous cube proof. I'm just asking where you are because you're in the hallway right now. Yeah, there's that's no. What you're talking about. That's that's where we are, I guess. Okay. Um, as you kind of settle down, not a few minutes go by when you hear um commotion coming from the east wing. And then you see the rest of the, the guests and party and whatnot running uh, out and kind of looking around carefully. Once they kind of get to the, the dining room and trophy room, they, they start to tread a little bit carefully. And they see you, and they yell out to you. Um, as Sarno approaches and the rest of them, they uh, he says, uh, he yells out, are you, are you okay? All of a sudden, uh, the walls in the other, uh, the other wings started shifting, and everything became... Uh, Different. Oh, great. Yeah, no. Callista almost died again. <laughs> Rub it in, why don't you? He says, well, it seems like we no longer have the safe haven of... Prug's room. <laughs> Prug is, is, uh... Is Father Malik there? Could he throw out some healing? Father Malik is there. They're all there. Um, Rug is holding, um... Uh, uh, Mr. Molasses, and he seems quite dejected that his room was destroyed. Did anyone on their side get hurt, or is everyone still up and running? There's some bumps and bruises and scratches. Uh, okay. Sarnel has a cut, um, but that's a, they, they don't look awful. Um, you're much worse for wear than they are. Um, <laughs> Our brave adventurers. Uh, Malik will give uh, Callista... Eight more health. Okay, thank you. I'm up to full, but I'm out of hit die. Okay. Um, if you spend a hit die, Lex, you can get back another six health. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Sarn, I'll ask you what the plan is now. Well, you guys want to go check out those green doors, and we'll go through this open door up here? He says that... Seems fine. Uh, do you know he what's says, in there? Don't split the party. I, he's not <laughs> part of the party. We can all travel as a group now, I suppose. He he does say, you know, with no more safe haven, uh, and much of the house already explored or triggered, as it seems. Um, perhaps it's time to travel as a group. Uh, okay. <laughs> you got Clister. You want? Are you okay with that? I know you don't like people. I like people just fine. I just don't know where else you're going to lead them. <laughs> or I, I just don't know where else we can we can hold up anymore, okay. uh, he says to you. All right. Um, my decisions have been awful so far in getting the party almost destroyed by traps, so I'm going to let someone else choose. Well, from what you know of kind of the general shape of the house, uh, or at least what you think you know with its moving staircase and whatnot, um, the, the open door should be to a fairly small room. Because yeah. there's not much space there. We don't need small rooms. They cause hell. But I'm not, I'm, whatever. Like I said, my, my decisions have been awful, so maybe that is the way we should go. <laughs> One of the small rooms you went into did give you a magical cloak, so. Mm, yeah, that's true. Have you been using that, Thorlin? Oh, yeah. Are you, what, are you at 19 AC now? 19 with my shield, yeah. Nice. All right. And plus one saving throws. And plus one saving throws. Woohoo! Right. 
Go for it. Study your green doors. Come on. Or small room or green doors. What are you doing? You said Study. small room first, huh? Maybe there's another cloak in there. This is this formal room is appointed with warm tones and exquisite wood inlaid with gilded designs. A single kerosene lamp rests on the desk and a leather bound or with a leather bound codex below. The bookshelves along with the walls have trinkets and tomes, but on the north wall is a large oddity. A glass tank with a dull green liquid houses a floating creature adrift in preservative ooze. The creature resembles a brain with a beak of a bird and tentacles like a jellyfish. How big is it? It's insignificant. It's not like um, it's like a small. I mean, it's it's it's, it, I guess, medium-sized creature. Well, he said it's in a jar. That's a big yeah, fucking it's brain. It's like a formaldehyde, like jar. Okay, and that's what we see in here. The corner houses the taxidermied body of a displacer beast. Ooh. So one okay. wall has the glass tank. There's you know bookshelves and whatever else on them. Okay, Kanto looks around. He nods. Check out that book, Kanto. No, no. He nods sagely. He pulls the dwarf out of the room and closes the door and says, let's go check out the two green doors. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Thorland shrugs and heads toward the green doors. Uh, give me um, a quick perception check, everyone, as you uh, are leaving the room. Natural 20. Oh, my gosh. You do see most stuff on it just seems to be kind of worthless as you're looking around. Um, you do see what appears to be a wand on one of the shelves. Ah, <sighs> shit. <laughs> you can continue to go out if you want to. Uh, Callista, there's a wand. How important is it to you? I already have a wand and a staff. Yeah, but wands are, you know, resources. They're not just like, oh, I have this dagger. I don't need another dagger. Do you know how close it, it I was? Could be, it could be a wand of burn every fucking buddy. Do you know, do you have any idea how close I was to getting Mage Hand? <laughs> I'm so freaking close to getting Mage Hand. Mage Hand rules. <laughs> that would have been great. Yoink! Uh, you know what? Thorlin, Thorlin will be your Mage Hand. <laughs> Thorlin, I, Thorlin yeah. will walk in and grab the wand. Kanto, Kanto makes wiggly hand, fingers like he's casting a spell, and Thorlin <laughs> walks over to grab Do you want to check it at all before you touch it? You guys seem super intimidated. <laughs> and uh, No, Thorlin's just going to pick it up. I, I get that for this one, but God, hopefully this isn't going to be how it is all the time. Um, the, uh, Thorlin just picking shit up? That's how it usually works. All right, as you uh, pick it up, it seems to be uh, nag- magical in nature. Mm. Um... If you would like to, someone would like to take a, an arcana check on it. If the dwarf I, brings it back just, to us, right? Can I Presumably. point it at the brain and see what happens? Nothing happens as you point oh. it at the brain. Okay, I'll give it to Callista. Callista, would you like to make an arcana check on the on the wand? Sure. Uh, Twelve. Yep, that's you, you a wand. You need to get some new fucking dice, Jesus. <laughs> um, yeah, as. As you kind of turn it over and you're reaching into it, you feel that it's a fairly powerful wand, and all of a sudden it goes off. Uh-oh. And uh, a beam shoots out towards the north wall, and the wall just... And the wall, the desk, the book, everything that was on in that area just fucking disintegrates into nothing. Ooh. That would have been so freaking helpful in the maze. And, uh... <laughs> while you can't obviously be certain, you're pretty sure this is a wand of, like, disintegration. Boom. In some capacity or other. So the wall is now missing. Oh. And beyond, you see the cool, crisp, dark night of Neverwinter. Oh. So we can leave? You see what you see. Yeah, maybe you can, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I'm, just so. telling, I'm just telling you what there is. Let's try tossing Lord Hamelin through that opening and see what happens. Who? <laughs> Um, oh, sorry. There's a there's like a porch beyond. It's not just like. Bleh. Oh, well, he, we could walk out then. Yeah, there's. A, it's not just a hole in a wall and then fall. It's a. It, there's. It's out onto a porch. Um, mm-hmm. before we go anywhere, can, uh, Flex, you have a wand of missiles and the spider staff. Yes. Do you think I could snag the uh, disintegration wand just for now? Sure. Thanks. You can have it. I'm I'm running out of spells, <laughs> so I figured. <laughs> <laughs> just something to have. Something. Yeah. All right, so are you going to go out on the porch? That'd be great. It looks like it's a viewing porch. Most likely it attaches to, like, the master bedroom, uh, possibly even the sauna or um, washing room space, and that you just blew through the wall on the side of it. Okay. So are you going out there? Um, how about Oakheart and I take a quick peek outside? Okay. 
Okay. Helena was so close, she just didn't know it yet. As you approach the balcony, you look out over the streetscape. A carriage rolls past as the night air breezes through the trees. Okay, so they can just like... How far, how, how, so we're on a higher level or we're on a... On a you're on... Um, so like there are stairs leading up to the manor, so you're up above. So kind of like almost as if the ground floor were just nothing, okay. like foundation. So the manor is up on kind of like a pedestal. So I, I could take my hemp and rope and tie it off that's what I was thinking. let everybody down so they can escape and we can do whatever we want? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I, this is what, yeah, I, this, I'm not like... I'm going to tie the rope off on the railing and uh, tell our guests that they should get the hell out of here. down and get the hell out. As you uh, kind of tie the, go to tie the, the rope around, you know, you loop over the balcony... Your hand is met by the feeling of cold, smooth stone. So it's an illusion. And all of a sudden, you just start to check, and everything in front of you is an illusion of some sort. You can't reach through it. All you're seeing is the streetscape beyond. Nora begins to weep. Oh, so does Thorlin. <laughs> hey, that's my would job. You, would you like to, <laughs> like, Arcana check the illusion? I will, if Callisto wants to as well. Doesn't matter. I got an 18. All right, you uh, you're pretty sure this is quite a powerful illusion, placed just to show the street beyond. Whether or not you're even on a balcony, you have no idea. Um, is there anything else out here? Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything on the porch. But as you kind of stand there, dejected, just really feeling the weight of, oh my god, we were so close, and now we're still strapped here. Uh, as you watch, um, you see a couple walking down the street. Um, let me give you, uh, let me, uh, get a perception check from, um, yeah, for you guys. Well, can't roll a 21. All right. You, uh, see the man and woman walking and you see the man kind of like stop for a second. He kind of lags behind and then he twitches and then he just lunges at the woman and starts just beating the shit out of her hey, and just should... strangling her and slamming her against the ground. And you just watch this happen in, in abject horror. And then she just goes limp. Calista. And then he looks down, and he falls limp on top of her body. Calista, it's improv time again. We've seen this before. <laughs> and you do, in fact, this looks exactly like what you saw before when the uh, the dock worker murdered um, the woman in the alley. That son of a bitch is back again. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I knew we should have tracked him down after we escaped from his madhouse last time. This house is taking shit from our heads and fucking with us. That's what's happening. <laughs> I think it might be the same guy. <laughs> uh, okay. That's 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 arc. That's not in game. <laughs> uh, remember when I said I've been planning the Halloween session since we fucking started? <laughs> Alright, let's continue. Where would you like to go now that you are all sad and can't get outside? <laughs> Kanto feels used. You find yourself back in the hallway, dejected after exploring the study, finding what you thought was a way out, and being dashed like so many ships against rocks. <laughs> and whatever really was there did not disintegrate with the wand. His Kanto started playing like a sad tune just to like bring everyone down even more. <laughs> <laughs> a lament. <laughs> and then... Now, you have some evidence. You have no names. You have no faces. Uh, I have one know. face. No, no, that guy's dead. But you know that whoever was behind your kidnap the last time you were in Neverwinter, the charming serial killer, as it were, uh. he charming his victims, yes. Um, I'm immune to charm. Yeah. yeah. Or advantage. I you have advantage versus. Yeah. You know that at least him or a copycat is present enough to have affected people on the street. Son of a bitch. This also means that the city guard will probably be along soon. Oh, good. So they can get you, Which gives you limited time. Because what dastardly plan might this villain have it's just a big old prankster big old meanie 
He's a big old magical jerk. We can't go outside. We can't go upstairs. We can't go downstairs. Rug cuts in. Mr. Molasses, Mrs. Molly. Oh, poor Molly. Never did find out where she went. Probably dead. Let's Wait. Forget about it. Is there or any, she's behind it. Is there any specific reason Mr. Molasses misses Molly, or just he just misses him? Krug and Molly are friends. Oh, yeah? Does Molly ever have any... Edit? No. No. Never mind. Well, that, that, that almost <laughs> got In <through>. character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, never mind. Uh, well, Mr. Molasses is easily the size of Molly, so there's a oh. chance that Rug just thinks all small fans are stuffed animals. I don't know. Um, that almost made me want to check... Mr. Molasses to see if Molly was in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's it's clearly, like, uh, stuffed it. Like, there's no way that something could fit in it. It's not like Five Nights at Freddy. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. It couldn't possibly be, like, a suit. Okay. Because it, it's sewn tight at, the, like, the arms. Okay. It's floppy. Cool. Well, I guess, I guess <laughs> someone could be in it, but they, they would no longer be somebody. I'd rather not so... incite the wrath of Rug by cutting yeah, but... open his teddy bear. What's awful I, is I had not said that, and now I'm worried. <laughs> You're worried it might actually have it. I'm a little bit ashamed of you. Yeah, no, don't fuck with his teddy bear. There are a few things that are in the adventure that will set Rug off. <laughs> One is fucking with the teddy bear. All right. Um, the green doors lie before you. Okay. Um, or anywhere else in the house. Or the way out to the garden, back through the trophy room. Or the servant's pass if you wanted to check there again. Uh, how about Thorlin... And Kanto just open both doors at the same time. All right. <laughs> if, if Thorland's okay with that. I'm good. You open the green doors. Dun, dun, dun. And s before you... Pit of acid. ...see a, a, a small vestibule with another pair of doors. What? Like smaller doors? No. Oh. <laughs> it's like... It's just constantly smaller. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> no. <laughs> Through the doors in the hallway, you enter a small vestibule. The vestibule is humid and smells of earth and vegetation. A pair of glass doors with gilded mochi motifs of trees stand before you, and beyond, you see the Arboretum. Hmm. Arboretum? Um, okay, so basically... It's just a greenhouse attached to them. Yeah. Don't trust it. I, uh, that, that does not sound like good news. Can, but through the Arboretum, how much can I see in there? Like, it's, it... uh, it's dark in there, obviously. Okay. Um, so you just kind of see the um, the silhouettes of like trees and plants, and it looks Perfect. it looks lush. But I would love to cast for the dan dancing lights through the door and light up the area in there. Yeah, for the uh, first time since we've been here, I wish I'd brought Hugh. <laughs> yeah, no, the minute you said you didn't bring Hugh, I was like, and there's plant, there's a plant room. <laughs> Damn it! But uh, because I figured you would like when I was writing this, I was like, fuck, he's just gonna fucking cut through everything in here. It's gonna be awful. <laughs> Well, you know, oh, when you murder. said we needed to dress up, I thought, you know what? I'm going to leave everything home except Talon, because he's yeah. the shiny pretty so, one. So, I would have actually been okay with you having both of them, yeah. but you were so emphatic that you hadn't brought it, I didn't want to be like, oh, because so, I, I like I like that you, you know... I sensed, you know I I mean? sensed the need for a good plot point later. Uh, so anyway, uh, would you like to em enter the Arboretum? Uh, the dancing lights inside, yeah. did that light anything up specifically? It just lights up the, uh, it's, um, a rolling landscape of plant life, vines twist overhead between the trees, uh, canopies, um, shade the mossy floor, uh, it's like a very nice, um, yeah, it's a very nice arboretum with, like... Why do I feel like we just walked into an REM video? We're not, <laughs> we're, we're not in there. Um, do I see doors? Uh, you do not. So just just a room. Uh, it's it's a big, big room. It's okay. easily the size of the entire library as well. So we probably can't see everything. That's what I'm saying because it's a rolling landscape. It's, it's like th gotcha. like they fill the room with like dirt and plants and whatnot, oh. so you can't see. There okay. could very well be another uh, door on the other side out to the uh, garden where they would carry you know plants from the arboretum into the garden, or vice versa. <laughs> what are your thoughts and feelings, Callista? How do you feel about this? Fireball, fireball, yes, fireball. Just, <laughs> kick the door open and throw a fireball in there. <laughs> I think it's probably safe. <laughs> All right. There you oh, go. Well, then uh, let's walk in. If uh, cool. Sarno will say, would you like um, me to hang back a bit with the group um, so that no one's in your way? Yes, guard the civilians. Okay. He'll uh, wait for your signal then. 
<laughs> as they kind of end there. The signal is me screaming. <laughs> <laughs> once or twice. Once just for you, twice is come get me. Yes. The signal right. the signal um, is a body flying across the room. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh you enter the uh, Arboretum. This is a bad idea. You see you're the first, plant life. You're first. Um You kinda the the first thing you notice is there considering what you've just been through in the house, there's this weird sense of like eerie calmness. Within the arboretum, like uh, it's just for the first time you're around actual nature, you can you, you feel, you know, the trees around you. You, you just there's it's well oxygenated. You just feel, oh, <sighs> you know, the grass. I didn't bring you, or I'd feel uncomfortable. Yeah, the grass under feet, uh, etc. Um, where the hell is that druid at? There's um, <laughs> you notice that you know like being on something somewhere. Yeah, there are some flowers in places, and actually, kind of, um. Towards the uh, kind of like off a little bit from not really in the center of the room, kind of off as you would be making your way. There does seem to be like patches of like exotic flowers that um, almost glow phosphorescent, um, giving off kind of this this Ooh. nice light. Um, probably uh, ingredients for an alchemist or um, food is pro- possibly grown here. Uh, there was a lot of fresh vegetables at dinner tonight that were probably grown right in here. Okay. Do you want to go just continue to kind of, like, sweep the, the wall? Do you want to just go through the middle and see if you find a door? Do you want to go check out some of these flowers, see if anything's cool? Yeah, if I could do a nature check on those phosphorus-looking sure. flowers. <laughs> Get shot um, in the face by acid. Um, <laughs> holy crap! That is four tonight. That's a natural 20. And plus how many ever from the earlier session. Yeah. Too many I times. might make you not use that die again. That's insane. <laughs> um, That's the only are... 20 I have. Um, these are pixie wishes, Ooh. Uh, which I just made up. <laughs> um, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> it's, it's um, a name like pixie wishes, they sound all kinds of official. They are an alchemic. Wait, um, if you hadn't said I made them up, I'd be flipping through my book right now. No, I, that's that's why I stopped you. Or why, <laughs> that's why I said I, I know you cheat. And uh, <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> the, uh, they are alchemic ingredients, uh, often used for uh, things that need to glow. They are also often used um, for decoration and whatnot. Can I cut some off and give them to Callista? Sure. Uh, and he'll do it in, like, super suave, too, like, behind his back and be like, Callista, what's that behind you? And as she turns around, she looks back, and he'll, like, holding him out with a big smile on his face. As you say, what's that Dorlin. behind you? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Dorlin is, it has this urge to rub them on his dwarf hood and wander around the night. <laughs> but it you're, passes. You're, you're ruining the moment, dude. As <laughs> they look behind you, she turns just in time Shit. for the party to be ambushed by the ground itself. Of course. Didn't see that one coming. Um, <laughs> I got pissed that I took its flowers. Can't so? Yes. Two large vines rip mm-hmm. out of the ground mm-hmm. and slam mm-hmm. down at you. Yep. <laughs> One rolls, rolls a twelve. Okay. The other rolls a five. I will. I'll take a chance and let both hit me. <laughs> the twelve hits you. Okay. Now I know. Um. Unless if it does damage, I would like to cutting words it and lower it. Handily, it hits you. Yeah, it's, it's going to do some damage to you. Um, Not that much, because I got an 8. Oh, are you up to a D8 now? That's yep. right. Which is good, because this attack is based on eight, D8s. Oh, good. Like, ha- wait, D8s? <laughs> Eights? <laughs> Take three bludgeoning damage. Okay, I can do that. The ground rises up, and a massive form of plant vegetation in the shape of a monster rises before you and it almost feels like it roars as it begins to attack. Roll initiative. A Cthulhu plant. It is not a Cthulhu plant. 19. Uh, 22. Uh, 4. <laughs> <laughs> I knew his was going to be less. Alright. I, uh, I love how excited he was when he said 4. It is uh, Cantor's turn. 
Alright, I'm gonna whip out the wand of disintegration. Right. Yeah. Point it at it and say, Motherfucker! You point the wand, and it vibrates in your hand as the energy builds up. Oh, and God. then, there's a popping sound, and streamers and confetti go everywhere. I hate you so much. The streamers say, <laughs> Zap! Uh, uh, so that's like, what, 46 damage? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> the moment you were, like, taking it from close, I was like, yes. <laughs> yes! Because <laughs> I knew this would happen before you faced this. this, uh, this. I knew you were going to use it immediately on the enemy. Uh, I will let you take an actual turn. <laughs> no, no. No, 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 because that, that was the whole... That was the thing. It's it's a pulse one. It's zap. Kind of like Bane from yeah, the fake gun. Yeah. yeah, I remember. It's it's the Joker gun. Basically. Uh. So real can, turn. Can I can my action be cry? Yes. Was that a bonus action? <laughs> no, it's a it's a free action. Actually. Oh, okay. Um. Well. Uh. <laughs> shit. I'm going to uh, cast friends on it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please don't okay. hurt me. Does friends have a type of thing that it's allowed to attack? It, it can't be hostile already. Oh, then. Yeah, yeah it won't work. Um, uh, giant ant. Let's let's be clear. <laughs> so it's it's like it's on me. Like it's in the same. It's five feet away, basically. Yes. Okay. I'll just hit Your it with. Choices my... are rapey or rapier. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I don't want to use my last freaking spell slot, though, so I'm just going to slice it with my sword. Oh, actually, I'll vicious mockery it, if that's okay. Sure. Give it disadvantage against me. Fail. Uh, seven damage total. All right. And disadvantage. Yeah. It is Thorland's turn. Attack. Oh, d sorry, would you like to take a, an, a bonus to uh, nature check it? Yeah, if you're going to give me the hint, I will. Uh, 17. It is a shambling mound. Okay. A shambler. Should shambler. I know anything else about shambling mounds other than what it is? That uh, super shambles. stealthy, very powerful. Oh, great. Uh, you don't know much. You know that, um... 17, you probably know that, uh... They're, like, mounds usually of, like, swamp stuff or, you know, other plant life. Um... Created by like fey energies and um, often lightning, when when it hits them, uh, that's what makes them kind of like a Frankenstein monster of fey energy and plant life. Okay. And um, basically, they live to attack and consume whatever they can. Okay. Basically, it's a really fucking evil chia pet. Yeah. I'm gonna hit it with my axe. That would be a 15 to hit. Y yes. Excellent. And Barely. let's make this a menacing attack. Mm hmm. That would be 13 damage and a wisdom save or be scurred. Uh, what's the DC on the wisdom? 15. He fails. Yay! Second attack. 18 to hit and 12 more damage. Uh, yeah, 12 more damage. To what was the total damage? 12 and what was the other one? 13, so 25. Hey. And I'm going to action surge. And I'm going to hit it again. Okay. With a 20. Yep. 14 damage. 27 for 10 more, so an additional 24 damage. Solid. And then I'm going to second wind because I can and I need hit points. Um, <laughs> the Shambly Mound attacks. Oh, crit, that's 15 hit points. God damn. Shambly Mound is going to lash out at you again. It rolls an 11. Oh, God. <laughs> I'll let it go. It hits you. Okay, I guess I'll cutting words it then. Uh, I'll go ahead and roll the damage for that. All right. I got a three. You take ten points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> oh, shit. The next attack, non-disadvantaged. Uh, destroys any AC you might have had. Um, yep. It has hit you with both of its attacks. So it will roll its damage again. Uh, 
<laughs> oh, shit. Uh, for another 15 bludgeoning. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Keep it coming. Yeah. And the Shambling Mound wraps both its tentacles around you. Yep. Mm-hmm. Brings you in. You are grappled and engulfed. You are blind, restrained, unable to breathe. Before I go in, I yell out, Remember me as being awesome? And then I go away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kanto has been engulfed. Damn. It is Callista's turn. How are we doing on health? <laughs> I have 12. I'm good. Burn me. A uh, Shambling Mount is made of inorganic material, right? Mm, organic material. It is made of what appears to be plant life and such. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll just fire bolt it. Okay. Uh, that's a one. Oops. Alrighty. It is Kanto's turn. You may get out of that shit. I may die. Is that what you're saying? Can I use the uh, disintegration wand again? Give me one second. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you just you were like fuck and dropped it and then <laughs> went about your business. All right, so you are grappled, so you can make the escape versus that. But now the only way out of here is that. Is there anything else I can do? What actions am I? Dex or strength uh, check to escape. I mean, that's all I can do? Well, you can yeah, flail your arms. You're restrained, so. Okay. And blind. Okay. <laughs> and not breathing. You just have to try to wiggle away. I will use... A, is it a dex check or dex, dex saving throw? I think to escape a grapple, it's a check. Okay, then plus three. Uh, <laughs> I want to take a picture of this. That's my... Uh, how many crits in a row? Or have I had? Jeez, that's like six. Yeah. Right, you break free and you fall out with you know vines wriggling around you. <laughs> you move and take a bonus action. Okay, I will get the hell away. From, uh, if I move away from it, I'm gonna get hit, aren't I? Yeah, then I'm not gonna run away. I'll just, I guess I'll just stay there and my bonus okay. action will be, uh, I'll cast. Shit. Uh, my last spell will be a level 2 healing word. Yeah. And let me look up how much that heals. You don't have a potion or anything? Oh, no, I don't. I never okay. got any. Calista wouldn't give me I any. Have... I got potions. Yeah, you I can't do anything about that, though. I can give you a potion. No, you can't. Not right well, now, you my can't. Turn. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it is Thorland's turn. Yeah, I'll heal so myself. As my bonus that. action, can I toss my water skin to uh, Kanto? I could let you try that. I will toss my water skin to Kanto as a bonus. Yeah, dex action. check. You're basically making like a ranged attack. Oh god. Uh, that would be 18. All right, you can throw it to him. Yeah. Uh, Kanto, if you'd like to try to catch it, make a dex check. Nah, uh, that's a seven. <laughs> it hits your hands and it kind of falls on the ground. <laughs> All right. Um, Thorlin, your actual action. Oh. Attack. That's only a 12 to hit. That is not enough. All right, second attack. That would be 23. 2d4 plus 5. And let's make it another menacing. Just so I get the extra die, and it has to be scared of me. 14 damage. And a DC 15 wisdom save. It does not make it. Scared. Alright, it will... <laughs> wants its meal back, first of all. <laughs> no, uh, I, feel, I feel bad just constantly attacking Kanto, though. Um, it'll lash out at Thorlin once, with disadvantage. Rolls insufficient. We'll lash out at Kanto. It rolls an eight. Okay, I'm going to let it hit me. What is your AC? Seventeen. You are fine. Okay. I'm gonna repost the miss. Okay. Goodness. Twenty-one. Yep. Thirteen damage. All right. Callista. When we're done, you should keep the confetti wand for parties. I do. I'm keeping it. Excellent. Never work again, but sure. I'll get a wizard to recharge it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Can you give me more bullshit confetti spells? So whose turn is it? It is Clistus. I'll fireball it again. 
And I got a zero. <laughs> so a 20? No, just no, a zero. Little, he's at minus four. For oh. All Jeez. Oh, so that's damn. That's part of why he's rolling low. Yeah, And part sense. of why you shouldn't have been asking him to navigate the maze. Yeah, see, I forgot. Can I use a disengage? Yes. And just get the hell out of there as far as I can go? Yes. Okay, I'm going to do that. All right. Bonus action? Uh, I, psh, no. <laughs> I call it a dick, and then I run away. Go ahead, Thorlin. <laughs> I'm going to attack. Uh, it's 23. We'll make it menacing again, because we can. And that is 16 damage for the first one. Second. 18 to hit. 8 damage. And is he feared again? He is. Excellent. All right. Uh, I've got one martial die left. All righty. Shambler will, quote-unquote, turn and attempt to pulverize Thorlin. Yeah. Misses with a 16. Mm-hmm. And misses with a 9. And I will repost. <laughs> with a crit. Okay. So 29 more damage. Exactly killed it. Boom! I was like, if he says 6, it's dead. Hold on, hold on. It just melts away as, like, vines and things leak off of it and just collapses into a pile of decomposing plant matter. Achievement unlocked. Thorlin becomes Master Gardener. <laughs> Green thumb. <laughs> <laughs> so after all this has happened, Kanto kind of dusts himself off, pops his back, then walks over to Callista and hands her the damn flowers and walks away. <laughs> Which are now kind of crushed and, like, broken in half. Yeah. <laughs> no longer glowing. Co- covered in... Yeah, they've rubbed away. <laughs> They're very dull. <laughs> he shoves it against her, just slams it into her chest. Take these. <laughs> um, Did you ever pick up the potion? Yeah, the one that was in the bathtub? No, no the, the one, one that I was... threw at you that you dropped. Oh, no, we should probably do that. Also, so there's, there's two potions in there. Right, two drinks. That's right. Do you want to taste the effing potion from the bathtub? <laughs> yeah, I would. Okay. It is a potion of acid resistance. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, let's go back and kill that other cube. You're so, so, um, you're such a dick. <laughs> I know. You each get 600 experience points. Yay. Oh wow! What would you like to do? So we're at 9165. Uh, let me get perception checks all around. Uh, 20 for Canto, or 21 actually. All right. Five. You uh, <laughs> there seems to be something shiny inside the uh, shiny the vines and. <laughs> detritus of the uh, the mound. An uncharacteristically moody canto just points at it and says to the dwarf, fetch. <laughs> and then as you dejectedly look away, you stare out the window and you go, because <laughs> what you see at the glass is a terrifying face looking in. I shoot it with my crossbow. But it doesn't move and you instantly realize that it just seems to be like some sort of, like, scarecrow or um, something out in the garden. Give me a, a roll. Uh, 24. The um, bolt hits the glass and uh, plinks off. Okay. I am down to about 14 bolts left. Thorland chuckles. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I was looking for an opportunity just to scare you with something, but I didn't know where... <laughs> I don't know where I could have that. <laughs> there it was. Yeah, it, just, it just looks like a ragged fucking scarecrow outside in the, in the garden. Cool. Fell against the glass or something like that. Don't blink. <laughs> the, uh, about, anybody feel like a short rest? Uh, check out what that shiny thing is. Okay. I'll go check out the shiny thing. All right. You find it. All you can see is kind of a glassy surface. Would you like to grab it? Yes. <laughs> It is some sort of marble orb the size of a piece of fruit, similar to the one you found before. Ooh, I'll take that I'll one, end. too. Canto. Um, 
and Ar- Arcana check it. It is a brown and green marbled orb. Oh, Earth orb. But you also see something else. It is an amulet. I grab it. It appears to be of good manufacture. Okay. Can Fancy I check? Am- can I check both of them? Sure. I got a twenty for the orb. Total. Okay. And I got a also a twenty for the amulet. The cool. amulet is not magical. Okay. Oh. But it looks cool. The orb has traces of conjuring and earth magic. Hmm. I'm sensing a pattern here. Thorland's gonna put the amulet on. Okay. It looks pretty. You like that? Thank you. Yeah. Imagine it instantly soul. burns into your flesh. No. no. <laughs> Son of a. Let's <laughs> say <laughs> Lex. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, now that that's happened, is there any other ways out of here besides the way we came? Um, as you kind of, like, look around, you do see a small glass door uh, that looks to be out into the garden. Oh. Out? Do you want to shout for the rest of the people to join you? <laughs> oh, yeah, two screams. Ah! Ah! Thorland's going to try the door and see if it opens to the out. It, swing, it swings very easily. To outside? To yes. the garden. Which is mm. probably surrounded by, like, in the middle of the house, I'm guessing. So it's surrounded by walls. So we nope. should usher out all of our guests so they can be eaten by whatever shambling mound is out there. <laughs> it's, um, it is not surrounded by the house. It is behind the house. Okay. So we head out into the garden. Okay. Mm-hmm. You enter what appears to be kind of like one of those kind of just, like, simple... Like rose mazes, big hedges, and just kind of like hedge rows and whatnot. You you appear to be kind of like in the middle of it. You could just go up, but you know that from the library you can see the open area, so you know you're very close to just a, a big oak tree. And then the fountain is on the other side of the house. Oh. It's in the garden, but it's on the other side. It's at at the uh, east wing side here on the oh, west. Oh, I see. So you are kind of where the fountain is on the other side of the house. Yeah, I don't but think But they're we... connected by a big outside garden area. I don't think we want to walk around because it just leads us back to the east side of the house. What if we just run away from the house? We can't. I think there's a big No, no Thorlin will run through the rose bushes. <laughs> I will make a tunnel. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Get us the fuck away from Death House. This is Murder House. We want to leave, right? This module is called Murders and Mansions. What? Murders and mansions. Of course it is. What are you doing? <clears throat> I'm thinking I want to like walk and run directly away from the house, even if it means running through some rose hedges. Sure. All right. Just you in. slam through part of the first hedge row uh-huh. as thorns scrape across you, and you take four damage. Oh, I figured the there's very some thick, thorny damage. The very thick rose hedges. So does that mean I hit a like a solid wall of magic that won't let me go any further? You hit of? a solid wall of wooden plant matter and whatnot that seems quite resilient. 